but you know, not excellent because it's yellow. So look at the first one, okay, through the back pouches. San Tong Bei. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Well, you can see, you know, you stretch your back and shoulder can extend in it. See? Very, very good. Okay? Next one, twisted body twist stance. Here, San Chui. Okay? Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. And do it on both sides. You can see how that could be a very good exercise for the whole body. So you can see that's like you know orange, red, orange, red, orange, orange. Very good exercise. So across the board, you know, so many of these that we study. Uh, are very good for practically the whole body. And certainly for the legs, oh, it's all solidly excellent. And if not, uh, very, very good. But the proof is in the pudding too, okay? So we had one group of students tested. After warming up with Tai Chi for five minutes and see whether that would improve their strength measured as the maximum of amount of weight they could lift one time okay maximum and for the five students that we tested you know one person increased the amount of weight they could lift by five percent this was by ten percent five percent ten percent this one was whopping twenty to thirty percent okay so it will improve strength in a bigger group of student testers, we want to test endurance. So we ask them to lift half of the maximum weight they could lift as many times as they can. So most people, like, you know, I could lift maximum 100 pounds. So the question is, if I lift 50 pounds, how many times can I do that? Typically, you know, a person could do seven or eight times. And that's a measurement of endurance. And you see for the 12 students tested, the average improvement was 20%. You can lift 20% more. That's quite significant. So instead of doing it for eight times, now we can do it for 10 times. Okay, that, that's, that's a, a very significant improvement. So using Tai Chi just for warm up for five minutes versus uh, empty-handed, like, you know, to warm up, uh, is a lot more effective. Next, muscles are not just muscles. Every muscle group, whether it's a bicep, tricep, forearm muscles, like, each muscle group has within it fast twitch muscle fibers and slow twitch muscle fibers. So, so muscle fibers are going this way in cross section and you stain them for fast and slow. So you see the fast and slow all mixed in together. Another way to look at it is the fast and the slow are all mixed in together and they are controlled by fast neurons and slow neurons. So what we're talking about is this. Let's say the bicep, okay? The slow muscle fibers are involved when you want to do something really heavy, okay? Or many, many times, okay? But if you want to like, okay, fast, it's the same muscle, but the fast fibers. <coughs> so if you want to, you know, function properly, you want your fast twitch muscle fibers and your slow twitch muscle fibers working properly. If you just have the slow or the fast, then, you know, uh, that doesn't work as well. And the important thing to know is this. The 
fast twitch muscle fibers are most affected by aging. Once you pass age 30, your fast twitch muscle fibers are first to go. You deteriorate, you, you, the deterioration of fast ones are faster than the slow ones as you age. So it's very easy to get into a, a downward spiral. As you get older, you can't move as fast. What you have to do is to do more fast exercises. But because you can't do it as well, you end up doing slower and slower you know, exercises. And like you know, doing Yang style Tai Chi, you know, oh, oh, this, you know. So it's a downward spiral. What you should do is actually exercise fast to overcome the age-related deterioration of fast muscle fibers. And the other thing you have to know is that if you exercise one but not the other, within 10 days, there's measurable deterioration. So you cannot say, oh, winter time, you know, I lift weights. Summertime, nice weather, I go out and run. No, you have to do both, okay? Because within 10 days, the ones that you don't exercise are gonna go down to very fast. So the lesson is that we actually need to do fast and slow muscle fibers exercises all the time, not just one or the other or just alternated within seasons. Next, still on muscles, okay. There are a lot of studies that show that uh, practicing Tai Chi is one way to keep the weight down. And it's very puzzling to a lot of people because, uh, you know, you are tuned to thinking about weight loss has to do with the number of calories burned. Yes, if you run really fast for an hour, you burn 600, 800 calories. But if you do, you know, slow movements, you only burn like, you know, maybe 100. How is that going to control your weight? Right? You wonder, huh? Uh, people, you know, just do Tai Chi. Ah, okay. It has to do with this uh, cytokine, or you can think of it as a hormone called interleukin 6 or IL6. What's going on is that every time you contract the muscle, contract the muscle, contract the muscle, the muscle secretes interleukin 6. What does interleukin 6 do in your body? It affects weight control, insulin sensitivity, breakdown of fat and glycogen. We're not talking about calories here, okay? So, what's happening is this, okay? When you exercise, when this muscle contracts, interleukin 6 is secreted into the bloodstream. When interleukin 6 gets into fatty tissues, it will help break down the fat over there. When it gets into the liver, it converts glycogen into sugar that your body can use as energy. And also goes back and makes insulin receptors more sensitive to decrease the likelihood of getting diabetes, or if you have diabetes, you know, you lower your sugar level. So interleukin 6 is very, very good okay, for the body. So, here's a very important experiment done uh, by UCI colleagues together with uh, colleagues over in uh, Sweden. They get people to ride a, a stationary bicycle as fast as they can. Okay? So strenuous exercise. Okay? Not just walking, in this case, just ride the bicycle fast. Okay? And they measure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different hormones. Okay? I'm using the word hormone loosely. And you can see that when you start exercising, all of these messenger molecules do go up. But the one that goes up most dramatically is interleukin 6. So when you exercise, 
interleukin-6 secretion is very dramatic. It goes up and up and up. But then when you over-exercise, it starts to come down. Okay? So you have to hit the sweet spot by exercising, but not too much. In order to get the interleukin-6 to go up. But there's one more caveat to this. Yes, interleukin-6 is very beneficial in terms of cutting out down fat and using glycogen, converting to sugar, and make insulin receptors more sensitive. But at a level that's too high, it has a downside to it. It will, unfortunately, decrease your immune system. That's why over-exercising is not a good thing, okay? Uh, because, you know, you will catch cold or worse because your immune system is not depressed. So in other words, you want to exercise so that you are like about here. And that's good because, you know, it's one of the fastest rising cytokines, but you don't want it to be here and you, you don't want it to be here either. So, in a way, Tai Chi or Chen style Tai Chi is, is good. You know, don't bring it up here. It's not like you know, running a marathon. Oh, God, it's bad. Okay. Or playing basketball for three hours, like many young people do. Or they'll work up here and they come back with a cold or worse. So, you don't want to hit it here. Now, if you wonder, I don't remember the endocrine 6, it doesn't seem to have to do it. Calories. It's a very interesting uh, series of uh, studies on interleukin 6. You see, this is a normal mouse, so the wild type, okay, and this cute, furry, bigger mouse is a mouse that they knock out the interleukin 6 gene. This mouse cannot make interleukin no matter what, it doesn't have a gene. And <laughs> You see, compared to this guy, it's not fat. You say, wait a minute, this maybe it's not fat, it's going on here. No, look at this. Uh, this is a maximum of fat, okay? This guy is packed with fat compared to this one. So when you don't have interleukin 6 at all, okay, it's pretty drastic when you knock out the gene and you end up like this. And just to complete the whole study, they inject interleukin-6 back to this mouse that cannot make interleukin-6. Oh, the body weight comes way down. And the normal mouse, when you inject it, it doesn't do much. So this is a definitive proof that interleukin-6 at the right level could cut down fat, cut down body weight, this is body weight. So what I'm saying is if you do you know, exercise that's not too much, not too little, such as Tai Chi, uh, it would, like, you know, prevent, uh, you know, getting too much fat in the body, and it would improve your sugar metabolism and decrease uh, uh, diabetic condition and so forth. And it's not how many, just how many calories you burn. Okay? All right. Next, uh, let's talk about hormones. Okay. So we have heard for decades from our doctors that uh, to keep our bone density high, particularly for older women, okay, you need to do weight bearing exercises. Okay. And but how many women uh, go to the gym and lift weights? So it's not many, okay? So it's a recommendation that's almost never followed on the long term. And maybe you go for the first month to do it. So there are many clinical trials showing that people who do Tai Chi have stronger bones. In this particular study, okay, randomized control trial is the most important type of study. Because one group did Tai Chi, one group did not for six months, and then you compare, okay? So, 
Randomized control trial showed Tai Chi group exhibited reduced rates of postmenopausal declines in bone mineral density. In a different study, they were comparing a group doing Tai Chi with a group going to the gym lifting weights, just by comparison. And really weird, you know, the Tai Chi group had higher bone density than the people going to the gym and lift weights. At first they were puzzled, they couldn't understand. Now Tai Chi is weight bearing, okay? Because you know when we do this, a hundred some pounds, you know, it's on these joints, your body weight, okay? So but how come it's even better than lifting weights? Oh, it's called how faithful you are, you know, to your exercise. See Tai Chi people, they, they really go and do it, okay, once a week, twice a week, they do it with friends. And of course, they have dim or have tea, they, they like it, they keep doing it. The people go to the gym, first week, they oh, just get all sweaty, and, and uh, that's all men, and they don't go, okay. So, as it turned out, you know, the people who really do it week after week, you know, actually get better results. So we're not saying Tai Chi is better intrinsically than lifting weights, but the people who do Tai Chi are more faithful to the exercise program and end up, you know, uh, a greater increase in bone density than the resistant training people going to the gym. More recently, the studies coming out show that weight-bearing exercises are not enough to keep the bone density high. They found that vibration the vibration of the bone structure is essential to that as well. So in this study, it shows that it shows that the group that did 10 to 20 jumps, this is a very high uh, foot off the ground, okay, two times a day, resulted in a significant gain in hip bone density after just eight weeks. So, exercises that involve jumping, like skipping a rope, or some like Tai Chi exercise I'm going to teach you today, you know, uh, are even more effective than doing regular Tai Chi where you don't have the skipping action. Because weight bearing and the vibration are two of the essential elements of keeping your bone density high. How about joints? Not just the bones, the joints, knee joints. A lot of people have problem with their knees, okay? Knee joints. Clinical trials show that Tai Chi is beneficial for arthritic patients. Okay, in this study, these are elderly patients, 65 years old. After three months, the Tai Chi group had a substantial drop in knee pain and more improvement in function measured by the so-called Womack scores. Womack scores, like you know, how many steps you can take, uh, how many steps, how high you can climb, um, and before you feel pain and so forth. Um, so, Tai Chi is effective for this. And let's say Dr. Paul Lam from Australia. He's a unique guy. Okay. He's a rheumatologist, and he's also a Tai Chi master. So he has devised what's called arthritis for, I mean, Tai Chi for arthritis, TCA. Okay. It's a modified form of Tai Chi where if you're already suffering from severe arthritis, you can't really jump too much, you can like, bend too low. So he modified the Tai Chi so it's a milder form of exercise. And that type of uh, exercise is now recommended and endorsed by the Fridays Foundation of America. So
Now, moving on, let's talk about connective tissues. First of all, you can get back pain, hip pain, shoulder pain from injury, overuse, like you can play tennis professionally, or basketball, right? Football certainly, all the wear and tear. Uh, the latest study shows that inactivity could cause these problems. This is a study done at the Harvard Medical School. They use these uh, mini pigs and they're perfectly healthy and then they put a brace on one leg so that they could walk but this, this doesn't, doesn't move, okay? They can still like, walk. After two or three weeks, this side that doesn't move gets pain and inflammation much like you know, something caused by injury or overuse. So not using a particular you know, part of your body could lead to pain and inflammation. So what can you do about this? The same people at Harvard Medical School tried this out. This is one of many mice <coughs> that uh, they use for the experiment. These are perfectly healthy mice. They inject into the lower back a chemical irritant so that the back is now painful and 